I want to share um, Peter's story today in his in his own words, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about what this looks like. This was recorded um, before the the COVID pandemic, so it is a pre-COVID story, but it's a pretty typical one for what it looks like to be growing up with HIV uh, in our setting in Kenya. <laughs> ana umri wa miaka 15 na anaishi na mama yake pamoja na madada wawili na mandugu wawili. Baba yake anafanya kazi ndani na nyumbani ambako familia yake huishi na mama yao ambaye hufanya kazi kwa masaa mengi. Pita ana ukimwi na kila siku yeye hujijuza mengi kuhusu ugonjwa huu na vile inamaanisha kwake binafsi na kwa maisha yake. Sikuwahi kufikiria kuhusu ukimwi nilikuwa nikidhani ni kitu cha watu waliofanya mambo mabaya sasa najua huo si ukweli nikienda kwenye kliniki ninaona wale ambao wamekujia madawa zao ni watu tu wa kawaida sio watu wabaya ni vile tu kwa namna moja au nyingine walipata huu ugonjwa hata watoto hupata utasemaje mtoto ni mtu mbaya Hawajafanya chochote nilikuwa ovyo sana na madawa si kwa nakumbuka ni vigumu kukumbuka kitu ukiwa unacheza mpira wa soka kama mimi ninapenda soka nilikuwa nikikosa kumeza madawa sababu ya kutokumbuka si kwa najaribu kuruka saa zingine dada zangu wakubwa wangejaribu kunikumbusha lakini jinsi walivyonikumbusha haikuwa vizuri sitaki kufanya wanachosema idadi zangu kwa sababu mama hayuko karibu au kazini wakati huo nilikuwa nakosa mara nyingi sana sikuwa na hisi vyema halafu ulikuwa na wakati ndipoenda hospitalini hapo ndipo nilipoambia kwamba nina ukimwi walikuwa wanasema kwamba nilikuwa mgonjwa kwa sababu si kumeza madawa madawa hayo kupunguza makali ya ukimwi wakati niliporudi nyumbani nilitaka tu kusema hayo hayakufanya mimi sina ukimwi nilikuwa nikijihisi vyema na nikafikiria labda ilikuwa ni makosa fulani nikidhani nilikuwa katika mshtuko mkubwa si kwa nasikiza chochote nilianza kugonjeka tena si kwa ninacheza soka sana watoto wengine walianza kusema ya kwamba si kwa na nguvu za kucheza mpira walianza kuongea kunihusu si kupenda madawa lakini niliudhika sana kwa mgonjwa kuna mtu ambaye alinisaidia kuelewa kuhusu madawa ilikuwa rahisi baada ya hapo nilizua nikikumbuka kuzimeza itakuwa vyema ni wakati ninaposahau niposa nitakuwa mgonjwa nilitaka kusahau kuwa nina ukimwi lakini watoto wengine walianza kunita majina walisema sitaweza kucheza katika timu ya hotel walifanya ikuwe vigumu pango kusahau kuhusu huu ugonjwa nilipata watoto wengine wa kucheza nao hawakusikia wale watoto wengine ambao kuongea mambo mabaya niko na wasiwasi kwa sasa. Wakati nilikuwa nikikataa kukubali, niliongea na mguzi wa kliniki. Alikuwa ananiambia kwamba kulikuwa na watoto wengine wanaokuja kwenye kliniki kama mimi tu. Kuna wakati ambao sisi wote huongea katika kliniki. Mimi huenda na kusikiza. Hiyo humsaidia kujua kwamba sio mimi peke yangu na tunafundishwa jinsi ya kukubali ugonjwa huu bado ni vigumu kiasi lakini siku hizi sirukishi madawa sitaki kuwa mgonjwa tena Pardon my technical difficulties there for a moment, but thank you for for listening 
to that and um, and watching. You know, it, it's it is really important to me, and and I hope we can agree together that on December one, on World AIDS Day, as we remember those who've been lost to AIDS, as we support those who are living with HIV, as we recommit together to our fight against HIV. However, we can bring in the voices of those who are living with HIV, um, we, we wanted to do that. And so this was a way we, we found that we were able to, to do that even in the midst of everything going on in Kenya where we couldn't, um, we couldn't uh, have our youth with us directly today the, the way that we would have uh, hoped to otherwise. So, you know, in that, in that story, as he told it, Peter talks about a lot of the same issues that, that many of our, our youth who are growing up with HIV face in terms of the challenges of coming to accept that they have this diagnosis of struggling through taking these medicines every day, of not wanting to believe that you're really sick of what it looks like and how it how it how deeply it hurts you when your peers or those around you um, are stigmatizing you for having this disease are saying things like you know that that you're not going to be able to live that only bad people get HIV that you shouldn't be able to share food or or places with them and and challenges like that um, and you know, so there's there's this huge body of challenge that that these youth are are moving through. It's often seems like a perfect storm sometimes for adolescents as they're already struggling to establish autonomy and to, you know, to it, they may be taking risks and they're trying to you know grow into the incredible adults that they're they're going to be. Um, and then when you add these layers of you know, doing that in the midst of, of living with HIV and then in the midst of a global pandemic as well, the challenges are really, are really huge. And we wanted to take a moment today to, to, I wanted to take a moment to talk about some of those specific challenges because we're hoping that, that by shining a light on them that maybe together as we're honoring World AIDS Day together, you might consider or ways that you could specifically support um, these youth as well today. So, you know, we're in the middle of, of this pandemic globally, the economic impact has been, has been really severe. Of course, it is in the United States, and that's true in places like Kenya as well. It, it, transportation is costing more money, you know, even the few cents that it takes to, to pay for the bus to come to clinic may be out of reach and those prices have been going up. Families are experiencing loss of income, loss of jobs, and when you're already getting by on an average of between one and two dollars a day, you know, that's a, a devastating loss uh, for a family. There's not a lot of margin there or buffer. Um, it's, of course, really difficult to make sure that you're getting enough medicines, that you have these medicines for youth, but also potentially for your whole family that you're taking every day, twice a day, especially when you're struggling to find food for the day or, or struggling to make sure that your, your shelter is, is secure. So all of these additional burdens are really right now creating more and more barriers to care for youth living with HIV. And there are long-term consequences to that when, well, we don't, we have not seen signs that people living with HIV are clearly at more risk for COVID disease itself. We worry a lot about the risks of illness and, and of death too, frankly, from all of these other impacts, from all the ways in which it's making it more difficult for them to receive care, to receive support for taking their medicines, to get their medicines, as well as just to have enough of the basics of food, of places to stay, um, and so on. And there's worry too that new cases of HIV are increasing in the midst of this pandemic, um, even as current patients maybe are, are dropping out of care. In, in this system where, where we partner in Kenya, the AMPATH system, where, where Peter receives his care, you know, we're currently providing care and treatment for more than 160,000 people. It includes children and, and adults. And that, you know, as these, um, you know, as the cases of COVID do increase again, as restrictions come into place, across all of those families, the the challenge of of receiving care grows and and grows. Um, 
And you know, even in our, even among our healthcare providers, the the challenge has been really significant. We've had a number of healthcare providers at the hospital in Kenya who have become sick. There have been two faculty members who've died in recent months. Um, and you know, and this is a, a place where already there are shortages of people to provide those services. So it's it's a personal loss and sorrow, but it means that there are even fewer people there to to provide the support that's needed. If you if you saw in the video, Peter, Peter talks about how the way that he really came to be able to take his medicines was through a support group at the clinic and hearing from friends, from peers who are like him, other youth living with HIV, um, and coming to understand, you know, that you could live positively, that you could have a normal life that way. Our adolescent clinic has been an incredibly rough shape during this pandemic. The actual building was, was somewhat taken over to turn into a COVID ward for the, the hospital system. They've been trying to function out of a temporary space in the basement of a building um, that's close by, but doesn't have the same kinds of, of just space and, and resources that they had hoped for. They lost their primary, uh, what's called a clinical officer, similar to a, a physician assistant, but a woman who's provided an enormous amount of HIV care for, for youth. She was, she was redeployed and pulled back for care elsewhere in the hospital. They've had their budget cut such that they don't have a counselor right now to even provide support for youth remotely, let alone in person related to challenges they might be having with mental health or adherence. They're not able to have the, the groups meet in the way that they normally would and they also lost their, their budget for that. So we we did hope we did want today, and I would ask you today to consider, you know, if there is anything that you, as you're listening um, to this and joining us for this today, if there's anything that you could do in terms of financial resources or, or support for our adolescent program today, truly any a gift of any size would be appreciated. There was a link with the invite and we'll, we'll post it again here in a moment um, where we're directly setting up a fund to, to meet some of these urgent needs at the clinic. Our, our goal, our dream would be able to raise enough money today to be able to put a counselor back in place in the adolescent clinic and to support the youth served by the clinics there, um, even for a few months, even across these next months of the pandemic and of increased lockdown. Ideally, we'd like to be able to run some support groups for youth again as well, again, using this model that we know works that we've developed in the setting that only costs about $50 to, to, to run and yet the, the clinic doesn't have that budget right now. And ideally, we'd like to set up a small emergency fund for youth who are specifically in need of food um, and in need of emergency shelter as families are losing jobs, losing, um, losing their homes in that way and, and in this really, this really rough place. As I said, my, my colleague, Dr. Apandi, will be joining us a little bit later and again, kind of talking about these, these specific needs, but we'd really, we'd welcome you to, if, if you're able at all, and I know it's a privilege to even be in a place to be able to do this if you are, but if you are able today at all to share something to honor World AIDS Day by directly supporting the, the adolescents living with HIV through the AMPATH program who are trying to support in Kenya, uh, we'd be really, really grateful for that. I'm going to actually share one more, more video that's that's sort of talking about this, and and I'm actually I'm sharing this in part so you know what the the needs are, but also again I think it really helps to give a window into uh, the place that we're talking about to see and to to hear and to know um, a little bit more about about who these kids are. Um, again, this too was filmed pre-pandemic. You know, we're we're struggling in the midst of all this as well to make sure that we're providing masks for these youth and for the the clinical staff, hand sanitizer. These are all things that we're we're thinking about actively in in the midst of this as well. So again, we really appreciate how people might consider what they can do in this. So more short um, videos, we, we sort of talk about what, what our needs are um, in this partnership today. And again, as a way to honor and commemorate World AIDS Day together. The Mount Sinai World AIDS Day. Oops. Sorry, let's see if that comes back. Oh, I think maybe I need to turn off my video. Sorry for technical difficulties, everyone. 
here just a second. Let's try this again. Hmm. All right. The Mount Sinai World AIDS Day event is a celebration for our community to have a way to honor those living with HIV globally. And we directly support youth who are living with HIV in Kenya. My name is Dr. Rachel Dreeman. I am a pediatrician and an HIV researcher, and I specialize in caring for children and adolescents who are living with HIV in some of the world's poorest places. When I think about global health and I think about HIV, I really think about the stories of the children I care for in Kenya. I think of stories like Peter's story. When Peter first found out that he had HIV, he thought all hope for the future was lost. He was 13, his father had already died from HIV the year before, and Peter had been infected by his mother at birth. Peter thought that HIV meant the end of his story. And this year, COVID-19 is making the challenges that adolescents like Peter and his family face even more daunting. Many families no longer have any income. Many do not have a secure place to live, and they're in desperate need of food. And that makes it even harder to figure out challenges like finding PPE or having access to your medicines for HIV. We want to help children and youth living with HIV know that this infection is not the end of their story. In Kenya, I work with a program called AMPATH that was born out of a partnership between Mount Sinai, Moy University in Kenya, and a number of other North American medical schools. AMPATH is one of the world's largest single HIV treatment programs, and through this partnership in Kenya, we provide HIV care to 15,000 children and adolescents and 150,000 adults who are living with HIV. If you talk to Peter today, he'll tell you that he found hope in a support group at his clinic that was for other kids and youth just like him. He said, this group became my family. It was the only place where people understood the burden that I was carrying. It was the only place where I had friends who believed that I could go far. And as the COVID-19 pandemic has spread, we've been struggling to find ways to offer these kinds of support groups and other support virtually to our kids with HIV. We've also lost the funding to keep counselors in the HIV clinics. Kids like Peter need support services, counselors, peer support groups, safe places, and fun places where they can connect with other children who are just like them. They need this now more than ever, and they need this virtually and in person. They need support as they grow up so that they can understand that HIV is not the end of their story. To make this kind of change happen, we need partners to join with us and to stand with kids like Peter. We need a community that's going to stand in support and partnership with kids and youth who are living with HIV. Please donate today to help families with children living with HIV. So thanks, thanks everyone for, for watching that. Thank you for a little window together into, um, into Kenya with us. You'll see there, there is um, a website that's set up with the specific, um, the specific place for, for funding if, if you would like to honor World AIDS Day in this way to contribute to these urgent needs for our adolescents who are living with HIV in Kenya right now. It's, you can find it at uh, giving.mountsinai.org slash go to slash AMPATH, uh, which stands for the academic model providing access to, to healthcare. This, um, this academic partnership together in, in which we try to do this. You'll also see at the website, if you're, if you're interested, it, we, we've broken down the specific support that's needed for different parts of the program, like a peer council, like, like peer support groups, like a counselor for psychosocial support and, and um, what can be provided in terms of the, the urgent fund there. So again, I, I really appreciate you taking the, the time to, to enter in with our families in Kenya to, in this way, walk with them for a moment today um, through this.